Welcome to BSW's Tech Dive. Tech, tech Dive. The birds, the ship. The show goes technically deep into products you care about. <laughs> the new, the old, the newish. So put on your gear, close up the hatch, and prepare to dive. Dive. The birds, the ship. And now, here's John. And welcome to another edition of BSW Tech Dive. I'm John Lynch, Director of Business Development for Broadcast Supply Worldwide. And this topic is called BrickLink. Now, that's a great name for a product for one thing. It works like a brick. You put it on and it stays on, which is, of course, the reason it was built, to stay on. I mean, I'm a not an engineer. I can't tell you how it works. I'm going to have a guest here that could, but the point is you put it on, it stays on, and you get your project done. My guest, Chris Crump from the Comrex Corporation. And Chris, this is one of those, I call it a Gene Kranz kind of a thing. Gene, of course, you know from Apollo 13 and uh, NASA, and he was famous for the statement of, I don't care what something was designed to do. I want to know what it can do. Well, BrickLink, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was originally designed to be a digital STL, but it's been doing so much more than just that. Yeah, I guess you could say that uh, necessity was the mother of invention in the case of the BrickLink. Um, well, actually, going back to the Access Rack that came out in 2005, you know. Um, Somebody that you know, John, actually caused us to redesign Access Rack when it first came out because we got a call um, and they were saying, you know, I'm having this issue where um, it stops working after a couple of months. And it's like, why do you have it connected for a couple of months? Oh, well, I'm using it for an STL over satellite. Mm -hmm. And we had never really conceived of it being used as an STL. Um, so we went back and redesigned Access and really ruggedized it. And as a result, people found this thing to be such a great solution for getting audio from the studio to the transmitter. And um, lots of people I know are using them as primary and backup STL links from the studio to the transmitter. Um, about 2009, um, we got the idea and a lot of feedback from customers that had been using these that boy, I, I really don't need a fan in it. I really don't need, you know, a full rack unit. I don't need all the low latency algorithms in it. Um, could you give me a smaller version? And so um, our technical team came up with BrickLink. And BrickLink was really kind of a, an answer to those that didn't need all of the low latency features and all the bells and whistles in the access uh, rack. And it really, really took off. And we were really surprised to find out how many people were using them as primary STL links on Class B and Class C FMs. And it has gone on to become easily our most popular product. I like have, you said, yeah, go ahead. Um, it does a lot more stuff. I have suggested that to a number of engineers over the years and just said, hey, look, well, that's not going to work. I, look, just let me send it out there and try it. I mean, I've done this probably 15 times over the years for people who just didn't think, nah, that's not going to be a great idea for an STL. And all 15 times they called back and said, John, send me a bill. I'm keeping it. It just did the job. Sounded great on the air. And, and like you said, it does a lot more stuff than just act as an STL. Um, I've actually had some customers that have used it to replace their satellite network by utilizing the um, um, IP multicast functionality in the device. And in this case, with IP multicast, as long as you have an IP multicast capable network, you can send from one device to a gajillion billion devices, theoretically, um, if that's a real number. But um, <laughs> it, it can work. Uh, not only can it do IP multicast, but it can do multi-streaming. So you can send from one device to multiple devices. So you could feed a transmitter and a bunch of translators and actually have somebody pull another stream off of it if they just need the program audio off of it. But wait, there's more. Uh, it can also act as an HTTP streaming server. 
Um, so you could actually set it up on uh, port 8000 or customize it to port 8043 and somebody up to 170 people can pull an HEAAC version 2 stream off of it and it could sit there and just feed your station to um, hundreds of people if you want. Kind of a digital uh, Swiss Army knife, so to speak. It really kind of is, and it does some other stuff too, including you can use it as a source feed for IceCast. So if you need to feed an IceCast server, you can plug your audio into it, set up an IceCast um, you know, the mount point and the server information and pick your algorithm and it will feed your IceCast server. And one of the greatest things about BrickLink, it's in stock. You can have it right now. In fact, if we have them in stock at BSW and can ship immediately. So it's not something you have to wait for. You have to put in for several weeks in advance or something like that. It's a product you can get on the air immediately. And from a technical side, okay, if somebody has never had a BrickLink before, what do they need to do in advance? Well, they need to make sure that they, well, there's not a whole lot they need to do in advance other than make sure that um, their IT department is going to be um, at least somewhat helpful in getting it set up. Um, at the bare minimum, you need to make sure that port 9000 is open coming in on your network. Um, it can have a static IP address or you can give it a dynamic address on your network. Um, you can also use it with Switchboard. Um, Switchboard is our free service that allows uh, devices in the Comrex Access and BrickLink family to see each other. There is a nominal fee for the license unlock on BrickLink only. Access rack units and access portable units uh, all come with the Switchboard service included. Um, so it's really kind of a, a simple device to get going and we have tech support personnel uh, available to help you get it set up if you should run into a snag or there's something in the manual that you don't understand. There's an awful lot of things it can do. You just need to order it. It's called BrickLink. Actually, it's the second generation. It's now the BrickLink 2. How does the 2 differ from the original? Well, the biggest difference is form factor. The original had um, quarter-inch jacks and it was in a smaller chassis. Uh, the BrickLink 2 is the same chassis as our VH2 and our Opal devices, kind of a new platform that we're able to build multiple products on, but it also has XLR uh, inputs and outputs on it. Um, and it also has, in addition to the Ethernet jack, it has a USB port that you can use for uh, an USB to Ethernet adapter, so you can run multiple networks on it if you want as well. And we should also point out that whether you have a BrickLink, a BrickLink 2, an Access, an Access NX, an NX rack, or they can all connect. They can. They're all upgradable to current firmware, and we are constantly updating firmware to increase performance and reliability and features. And all of those updates are practically free for updating your firmware on those devices. We've been talking about BrickLink 2 specifically, available here at BSW. Chris, thanks for joining me. Chris Crump is our guest, and our topic, BrickLink from Comrex Corporation. And this edition of Tech Dive from BSW, thanks for joining us. Baby, turn out the light.